have we? So, is it blinking? I don't see anything going on. Oh, there it is. It's because it was turned the other way. Um, give your attention to the screen. I want to bring this up. I've told you that uh, next Friday here we're going to have a movie called uh, Breakthrough. I uh, just got it, and uh, we're going to watch it. And you talk about a mother's faith. Uh, it's huge if you've never seen this film before. So if you would point the camera to the screen, and Riley, if you will start that, I hope that's what I got next. Rise and shine, breakfast is ready in 10 minutes. And don't make me come back up there. This is our town. It's a close-knit community, the kind of place where everyone knows everyone. Hi, Miss Jay. Hey, how are you girls? And we're always there for each other. Nice sermon, Pastor. What do you guys have on for the rest of today? Well, John has a basketball game. Yeah, I've seen this guy boop it up around here. This kid is so lit. Text your mom tomorrow and tell her when and where to pick you up. And uh, don't do anything stupid. Love you guys. We're training for the Olympics, sir. Cindy. John! He's been underwater for more than 15 minutes. It's going to be a recovery, not a rescue. I got something. We got him! We've done everything medically possible. There's nothing more we can do. <laughs> no. Please, God. Send your Holy Spirit. To save my son. A 14 year old St. Charles boy who spent 15 minutes trapped underwater is continuing to fight for his life. I don't believe John will survive the night. You don't know my son. He is a fighter. So I need you to be the best for John, and you just let God do the rest. You are my pride and joy. I can't wait to see you shoot those baskets and run up and down court again. The Smith family asked for one thing. Please pray for John. In the water that day, I was ready to give up. But then I hear this voice telling me, go back. Either I'm nuts or God's talking to you. But I don't believe in God. I believe. But maybe that only goes so far with something like this. I'm your pastor. I'm supposed to walk alongside you for as long as it takes. Did you see the Facebook page? It's gone viral. Tommy? I hope he's going to be okay. We're not going to get through this alone. Whatever you have for me, for Brian, for John, I surrender. So that's next Friday, 7 o'clock. Invite your... Friends, please, we want to be an outreach here, not just an entertainment place where we come together and watch movies and eat. Uh, it's a great opportunity for you to invite someone that maybe doesn't know the Lord or, or whatever, and that's a good time of uh, a fellowship. We need to take up an offering or they'll probably fire me. Uh, my dad's going to come. Come on up, Dad. And I've got a mic here somewhere. Yeah, he's going to sing for us for the offering. So let's uh, just pray. Father, uh, we're here to honor mothers, Father, and we just uh, so appreciate you letting them uh, come and raise us. And sometimes, Father, we overlook that what they, what they go through. They put up with us kids, and, and then, Father, we turn around and we, we need to take care of them. So, Father, today we just honor them. And, Father, as we get ready to take up this offering today, we just ask you to be with that, Lord. It's a way that we come and worship you and praise and worship, and we give as you have given us. So, Father, bless this offering. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As he sings, you can bring your offering up. We have the boxes in the front and the back. You all probably know that by now. So. Thank you, son. I did have a great mother, Bob Tess. 
he spoke on that a while ago. We had a mother that uh, I can't stand here and praise her enough. And she must have did something right because my brother was a preacher. My sister was on the mission field for a while. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a throat problem here today. And I hand me down, I got a son, very proud of. The song is Mama's Prayer. And I know you've probably heard it. I might have sung it here before, but I had a great mother, that's all I'm gonna say. <clears throat> Many times when I was young, I saw tears in Mama's eyes, and I didn't know what thing it was that made my Mama cry. But as the years went by, I understood each tear Mama cried for her children While she was living here She prayed, Lord, please save my children I'm asking you today Lord please save my children don't let them stray away just keep your hand upon them don't let them die in vain but Lord please save my children on this I pray today now the years have come and gone since my mama passed away Back in my memory, I can hear her every day. She prayed that she would just hear me say, Mama, I got saved. see a man 
break down, just talk about his mama. A lot of emotions when it comes to a mother. One of the greatest gifts that a mother can give her children is telling them about the Lord. And one of the greatest things that a mother can do for their children is pray. Pray continually. Let your kids see you pray so that they will want to copy what you do. Um, you know, I just want to say this, and I'm going to skip a lot here because we're running out of time. I know you want to take your mom out. But uh, raising children are tough, and you're going to make mistakes. But if they can see in you a faith that doesn't waver, if they can see in you a mom who is on her knees praying and reading her Bible, it'll have an impact on you. And they'll grow up and they'll see that. And eventually they'll say, I want to know about this Jesus because you must really believe in him to follow him no matter everything that our family has went through. I don't want people in this room to have any regrets because I know a lot of people live with a lot of regrets. Riley, I'm going to ask you to skip down to the... Um, no, I want you to skip that one and go to the clip of the guy that's, you know what I'm saying? Watch this one if you would. This one's pretty powerful. My mom would be at all my sporting events. Let's say I was playing football, okay? My mother would be on the sidelines, and if the play on the field started going one way, my mother would run along like, Mike, get him, get him! I'd be like, oh my gosh. I'd get in the huddle with the other guys, they go, Mark, is that your mother? i go, no, I never saw her before in my life. <laughs> the greatest gift my mother ever gave me, she believed in me. I have overdosed on drugs on three occasions where I should have been dead. But I believe I was kept here for a reason. You show me your friends, I will show you your future. How do I know this? I hung out with losers and I became the biggest loser of them all because I gave up everything I dreamt about as a little boy because of who I chose to surround myself with. My friends would drive me home at two, three, four in the morning. We'd be drunk and I, laughing in the car. We'd pull up in front of my house in New York. They go, Mark, Mark, the light's on. I go, oh man, my mother's up. See, my mom wouldn't go to bed until she knew her son was still alive. I'd walk in, she'd say, hi, Mark, how was your night? I go, it was good, mom, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, mom, I'm tired, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, Mark, I haven't seen you all day and all night. Can I please talk to you? I said, man. Just leave me alone. You bug me. I'd slam my bedroom door on the one person who believed in me. I was on a worldwide tour when we were wrestling overseas in Japan. After my wrestling match, I went upstairs in my hotel room and I fell asleep. There was a knock at my door at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got out of bed. I looked through the safety window and I could see it was a Japanese promoter. So I opened the door and he said, Mark, you need to call home. There's been an emergency. I went and got on the hotel room phone. I called back to the United States and said, hey, what's going on? I said, Mark, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, just tell me what happened. All of a sudden, started crying. They go, Mark, I can't tell you. I said, just say it. I said, Mark, your mother died. I just threw the phone down. I ran out of my hotel room. I took the elevator to the lobby and when the doors opened up, I just ran out into the street. I mean, there was no cars, there was no people. It was three o'clock in the morning. And I walked down the middle of a street in Hiroshima, Japan. And I remember looking up and just saying, Mom, I am so sorry. I flew home for her funeral and I was so nervous to walk up to her casket. So I just stood way in the back. And I kept looking from a distance, I kept thinking to myself, Mom, please wake up. Please get up. And then I finally got the nerve to walk up to her. 
and as I got closer, I could see my mom for the first time. I mean, she was so beautiful. She, she was dressed in white. I mean, she looked like an angel. And I just stood over and I said, Mom, you are my hero. Everything I am, everything I hope to be was because of you. You loved me so much. You gave me a life. You're the only one that ever believed in me. How did it repair? By getting drunk? By getting high? By getting stupid? By hanging out with losers? For what? All she ever wanted to do was talk to me. I wish I could talk to you now, Mom. I wish you could see what I'm doing. Why couldn't I have been a better son? We are defined by our choices. But if you surround yourself with people involved in drugs and alcohol and pills, it's a dead end. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to tell you I lived that life. It leads to broken hearts, broken relationships, broken dreams, and death. For what? To get high? If you have a mother or a father, when you go home, tell them how much you love them. See, my whole life was about being rich and famous. I had to be a millionaire. I had to win the race. I had to win the race to expense my marriage, my family, my friends for what? To be all alone in the world? And learned what is truly important, and that is how precious this gift of life is and our families and how quickly it can be taken away. See, I no longer live in time. I live in moments. See, it's not what's in your pocket that matters. It's what's in your heart that truly matters. Love. Love is just a word until somebody comes along and gives it meaning. You. You're the meaning. If you got a mom, spend time with them today. If you have, if you're estranged from your mother, make it right. Time is the worst enemy of a Christian. I'm telling you, time will slip by you, and then all of a sudden you will realize it's too late. So if you got something against someone, or forgiveness against someone, or your mother or parents or brother or sister, make it right. Get right today. But make sure that Jesus Christ lives in your heart. Make sure you know him as personal Savior because that's the only way that you'll ever see your mama again if she's already gone. Let's pray. Father, we give honor and praise today to you and to mothers everywhere around the world. Today is a day we call Mother's Day and a day that we honor them, Father. And we just thank you for the ultimate gift of giving your son and giving us a mother who cares for us and watches over us and takes care of us. What they go through in childbirth is the next closest thing to death, I'm told. So, Father, let us give honor and praise to our mothers today. And Father, as we go out of here, may each and every one in this room know for sure that you live in their heart that they have accepted you as personal lord and savior and if there's somewhere who hasn't made that decision today i just ask them to look inside their soul and say god i'm a sinner please save me today we just thank you for this day we thank you again for the mothers and we just praise you in jesus name amen cappy
Almighty God, receive us this hour as we offer ourselves over to you in body, soul, and spirit for the blessings of this day. God bless all you mothers. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. You are dismissed.